हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माई टूडे इज लेक्चर इज अबाउट फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम और इन सिंपलर वर्ड्स वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न फंक्शन ऑफ फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम एज नाउ वी हैव लर्न इन एटमी नाउ फिजियोलॉजी विल बिकम इजियर टू अंडरस्टैंड सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड्राइब नाउ एंड प्रेस द बेल आईकिन नेवर मिस एन अपडेट Okay, we all know very basic idea that reproduction begins with the development of ova and sperm. By the way, why I am discussing reproduction here? Because we are discussing reproductive system, and the definite function of this system is reproduction. So the whole story begins with the development of ova and sperm, which are obviously male and female gametes. Now the question arises: How they reproduce? When? they fuse to each other like this the fusion finally starts a new life and that process is called fertilization let's move towards our today's topic if i specifically talk about female reproductive physiology then it starts with the development of ova in ovaries which is a reproductive organ if you remember anatomy where i told you that ovary is the site of production of oocytes here in the diagram at the right you can see the structure of an ovum don't get confused with ova and ovum ova is used as plural and ovum is used for one mature oocyte so here we have corona radiata plasma membrane nucleolus and all that i'm not going into details as we can detract from a topic so here it is a very good animation of an ovum releasing from ovary after maturation female reproductive system is performing so many responsibilities and it is very complicated there are enormous ongoing processes which are interrelated to each other but to make it less complicated let's divide them into two major phases phase 1 is very important as female body is preparing itself for conception and pregnancy so let's see how female body prepares itself for phase 1 in this phase a cascade of events are occurring in female reproductive tract which includes ovarian and uterine cycle as name depicts ovarian cycle includes those events that are taking place in ovaries and uterine cycle depicts events of uterus as you can see that an ovum is releasing from one of the ovaries into fallopian tube and leads its way to the uterus where it is disintegrating and finally the endometrium which we know already from anatomy that it's the innermost lining of uterus which has has started shedding when there is no fertilization occurred moreover the days countdown at very right of the picture is showing the length of this phase which is approximately of 28 days in these 28 days both ovarian as well as uterine cycle is completed here one thing you should keep in mind that all these events are occurring when fertilization has not take place is taken place yet okay second phase of female reproductive physiology starts with fertilization which we discuss in the start of this lecture and that phase is called pregnancy these are the stages of development of fetus starting from fertilization to the development of a baby in the womb of mother let's move on to the details of first phase which is <clears throat> the point of focus of this lecture which begins with the ovarian cycle which i already told you that the events occurring in ovaries for preparation of conception and pregnancy is termed as ovarian cycle let's officially start ovarian cycle which includes two very important interrelated process first one is oogenesis in which female gametes or ova are produced and second one is follicular genesis the formation process of ovarian follicles do you remember my last lecture in which i told you about oocytes and their supporting cells which are collectively called as ovarian follicles still confused don't worry i will discuss it in detail in this lecture but later on so let's get started with oogenesis which we can define as a process or journey of an oogonium to mature ovum 
Let's start the life story of an oogonium. Oogenesis is a very complicated process as well as very fascinating at the same time. How fascinating it is, I will justify it in a minute but before. You should know that oogenesis is further divided into two phases which are phase one starts before birth. Yes, it's true before birth of baby girl. She had millions of oocytes in their ovaries and the second phase of oogenesis starts at puberty. When ovaries became active again, it means the period from birth to puberty is considered as inactive period in which no major development takes place until puberty. If we compare it to male reproductive system, don't you think it's fascinatingly amazing that female reproductive system starts working before birth. Moving on towards the details of oogenesis in phase 1, the journey begins with the ovarian stem cells or oogonia. It is basically a developing egg differentiates into a mature egg through a series of steps called oogenesis. The oogonia in the embryonic ovary complete mitotic replication and the first stage of meiosis and differentiate into primary oocytes by the fifth month of fetal development. These primary oocytes are then arrested in prophase 1 of meiosis 1. So it means by the fifth month of fetal development, the oogonia in the embryonic ovary complete mitotic replication and the first stage of meiosis. Then mitosis ceases and no additional oocytes are formed which is very obvious. Definitely, if oogoni are not dividing, then we cannot have oocytes as well. This schematic diagram of oogenesis is summarizing all process, in which you can see that oogonia divide mitotically and differentiate into primary oocytes. Then primary oocytes undergo first meiotic division, but arrests at prophase 1, and they remain arrested in this phase until a girl reaches puberty. Moreover, as I told you earlier that during childhood, ovary remains inactive. So that was the end of first phase of oogenesis. Let's move on to second phase that <clears throat> start at the onset of puberty. We just discussed that primary oocytes remain suspended in prophase 1 of meiosis 1. So with the start of phase 2, primary oocytes complete their first mitotic division and after completing first mitotic division, primary oocytes undergo second meiotic division and differentiates into a secondary oocyte or a large immature ovum along with first polar body showing with arrow in the diagram. Why it is so small? Because secondary oocytes has asymmetrical division. Each of these cells contain 23 duplicated chromosomes. Here is a point to ponder that primary oocytes were diploid and secondary oocytes are haploid, having single copy of each chromosome. So the first polar body may or may not undergo a second meiotic division and then disintegrates as there is no need of polar body. Then secondary oocyte undergoes second meiotic division and after the cystic chromatids separate, the process of meiosis ceases again at the metaphase 2 of meiosis 2. Remember metaphase 2 of meiosis 2 and they remain arrested until fertilization occurs. For fertilization to take place, a mature oocyte must release from ovary and that process is called ovulation. Why ovulation is necessary? Because if you remember the site of fertilization in female reproductive tract was infundibulum. That was the very first part of fallopian tube and if fertilization occurs, secondary oocyte that was arrested at metaphase 2 complete its second meiotic division. This animation is great for understanding this concept in which oocyte is arrested at metaphase and now this picture is basically summarizing the whole journey of an oogonium to ovum where all the events before birth and after puberty before fertilization and after fertilization are described in great detail. At the end of the oogenesis, let's have a look at some interesting information about oocytes that at birth 
the ovary contains about 1 to 2 million primary oocytes. The number of oocytes present in the ovaries declines from 1 to 2 million in an infant to approximately 400,000 at puberty to zero by the end of menopause. Because from millions only some of them mature and released from ovary, so the other disintegrate. And now we know that what are oocytes? Let's talk about some follicles which are combination of oocyte and supporting cells. These follicles basically grow like oocytes but by the process called, yes, folliculogenesis. Remember folliculogenesis when I told you about ovarian cycle, that it completes in two phases, oogenesis and folliculogenesis. So that is the second phase, that folliculogenesis. Let's have a look in this process that what is happening here. Follicular genesis typically leads to ovulation of one follicle approximately every 28 days along with death to multiple other follicles which is very obvious as we know that it is an interrelated process with oogenesis. So it will definitely mimic oogenesis. Moreover, like oocytes, ovarian follicles also dies and this process is called atresia. Previously, we discussed the journey of oogonium. Now here, we are looking at the journey of follicle from primordial to tertiary follicle. So the basic follicular story starts from small primordial follicle and these primordial follicles are having a single layer of squamous tissues around them which are termed as granulosa cells or supporting cells. Here is the full picture summarizing the whole process of folliculogenesis. Here we have an oocyte in the middle surrounded by a layer of granulosa cells. Wait a minute, which oocyte it should be? Think over it, yes. Yes, you are right, it is a primary oocyte. So moving on, now you can see that primordial follicle is now called primary follicle as granulosa cells are changing their shape from flat to cuboidal cells. Then primary follicle differentiates into secondary follicle. Can you tell the difference between primary and secondary follicle? Yes, it is again granulosa cells. Now they have increased in number and in getting increased, increased and increased. You will be thinking here that what is the purpose of granulosa cells? You don't have to worry about it. I will explain it but in my next lecture. So, <clears throat> moving on, you can see a cavity is beginning to form here. This cavity is basically called antrum. This cavity also getting increased in size and it is evidently telling us that now secondary follicles are no more secondary. Now it became a tertiary follicle surrounding a secondary oocyte in it. Here is another very good depiction of stages of follicular development. I think we have studied a lot today. Let's summarize this lecture. For summarizing, this picture will be a great idea. It is showing major events of both oogenesis and follicular genesis. Before birth, we have dividing oogonium, which are surrounded by follicular cells. And then at birth, a newborn female has a primordial follicle with a primary oocyte. Then childhood period has no further development then at puberty, that oogenesis and follicular genesis resumes and primordial became primary follicle, but it they still have primary oocyte. After primary oocyte resumes meiosis 1, it became secondary oocyte, so as secondary follicle. When a follicle develops into tertiary or graphene follicle, don't worry, tertiary follicle are also called graphene follicles. So after that, the process of ovulation takes place. Now a follicle became corpus luteum, as it does not have any oocyte in it. And if no fertilization occurs, corpus luteum turns into corpus albicans, which disintegrates finally. So that was the end of the lecture. If you like this video, kindly subscribe my channel.